Thank you. Um, not for service delivery. Should be. Okay, Chairman Leggett. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we're going to turn the floor over to you. We good okay. now? We are live now. Thank you, Beverly. Um, I would like to call this meeting to order. This is the Service Delivery Operational Committee. Uh, it is now uh, 106 p.m. Uh, Tuesday, June 13, 2023. And uh, I'm actually uh, officially calling this meeting to order. Uh, go by the agenda that's written. All right, thank you, um, Director Leggett and the public watching us today. Um, we don't have any action reporting from this committee at this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, do my service delivery report. So um, I'm sure you're pretty aware about our safety um, security that we had sound, we had sound state. They were our security um, management. And as of May, they are no longer in contract with CAT. And so we plan to have our in-house security and which we are in the process of recruiting, training, and establishing our own uh, safety and security staff in-house. Um, I'll start first with the accident report for the month of May. The only thing that we're working on currently with the safety officer is that there's a tendency of um, preventable accidents on our mirrors. Um, drivers are not mindful. There's a side swap that is uh, causing us um, um, losing our mirrors, which is all um, things that could be prevented. So. Uh, we're working on that to have formal training for the drivers to be mindful. This is all stuff that could be prevented. And that is on the accident for May. On May. You're welcome, Ms. Fay. Now on training, um, as reported earlier on, we had five fixed route CDL in class and two paratransit. They all came out of class uh, May 26th. And the bad news is that three of the five are left right after graduation. We'll still have two for fixed route and also the two for paratransit are with us. So we ended up having two fixed route with CDL for our operators and two parish transit drivers. And they all graduated May 26th and they are part of our workforce. Uh, next slide, please. 
We're still on a fixed route. Um, ridership went up in the month of May, 62%. Our goal is to do whatever it takes once we got full staff to hit that 70% um, target. And that's our goal. Uh, we can all do this when we fully staff with the manpower issues that we're having. Um, but the good news is that uh, month of May um, on time performance was higher than um, the month of April which means that we're getting close to our target of 70%. We're still on a fixed route. So ridership um, dipped down to um, a negative 0.14% as compared to the month of April. Uh, we're down to 149,952 riders, which is still not close to our target. Um, this is all happening because of lack of manpower, um, over age fleet and over mileage fleet is also a problem. So when buses break down, it takes some time to swap them off and all that interrupt services. And um, since if we can, um, as long as we can have all this uh, corrected, have manpower, have reliable fleet, I think um, it's going to entice the public and to use our system. And therefore, we expect our ridership to go up as we can have all this uh, in place. And next slide, please. On the uh, power transit side, I have this report. Um, if you look at the mist trip, it used to be 100 and over, sometimes 200. It was miscalculated. Like I said in the last, um, last month, a committee hearing that we, we team up with FTA, and FTA kind of guided us on how to report a mist trip. So mist trip came down to four, which is good. The only drawback on uh, in, in the report of for May was the no-shows. The no shows went up, as you can see. Uh, last month was four, 412. The amount of May was 501. And this is something that I'm working with the team to make sure that we go by our policy. Our policy is if you have six uh, trips that are um, uh, no shows, then we will suspend your service and consequently uh, take it out of our service. So the monitoring that is something that I, I am very involved in making sure that making sure that all that is corrected because 501 um, people no show we we send our fleet and uh, our drivers to to pick them up they didn't cancel and they didn't show and that's not how to do business uh, it causes a lot of money to do that so our policy is is going to be enforced and six trips that a client don't show up and leads to suspension and then consequently um, cancel their services so that's what i want to share with the committee about paratransit no shows next slide please the good news in all this that on time performance is okay uh, compared to last month, uh, the month of April, we were a lot of high, 0.5%, uh, which is okay. Um, previous month, I've seen it go as high as to 90%. Um, again, we're still short staff and um, we're doing everything we can. With a new fleet uh, EVs, um, that's going to be rolling out uh, June 16. We are hoping that service will be reliable and therefore uh, on time performance will go up. Next slide, please. On the marine side, for the first time since I've been here, this is the only time that I've seen ridership went down uh, um, as compared to last month and significantly 
it was a negative 52%. Um, I called the department head and uh, what I got is that historically, uh, based on a uh, five years stretch uh, data that I, I research, is quite normal for this month, the month of May. Uh, school um, Schools are closed and all that stuff. So this is even high compared to last year, May. So um, no panic here. It's just, it's just um, what happens every year in May. But we, we hope next month report, we go back to how ridership has always been high on the marine side of our business. Thank you, Ms. Fay. All right, um, back to my reporting. On the maintenance side, uh, as Director Clinton uh, suggested that we break them uh, into categories so we can track uh, um, what we call mean, um, mean distance between vehicle failures. Pretty much that means that how long can we run before our vehicles break down? Uh, on the fixed route side, if, as you can see from the table, the diesel and all the hybrid were very down to national average. National average is about 14,000. Um, the uh, diesel and the hybrid were down 13,000, not even close to the national average. And if you look at the electric buses, they were way above um, the national average, 19,212 which is way above the 14,000 um, national average target. So um, I guess in the future we'll be doing more um, electric vehicles as it's aligned with our uh, vision of going green. And also it proves that they can run much longer before any breakdown. And to, to, to the credit to the maintenance folks, they're doing whatever they can, it's just that these vehicles are over age and they are over useful life. And we have a, a plan in place uh, to replace almost about 25. And when we get there, I'll share with the committee on how, uh, what strategy we're gonna use to rebuild them and make them better. Now, um, this is just an update of my division. So on the CDL side, which I am happy to share with the committee that I was in Savannah uh, Tech and uh, Bobby was, Director Bobby was there with me. I uh, gave a speech which really uh, enticed a lot of folks to also come on board. I used my own life experience as a bus driver, going through all the ranks and, and, and my, my story really sold very well. We had 11 people sign up on that day that are all interested to be part of the CDA training. Uh, currently, we have a lot of hiccup um, with staffing, HR and training, and we're looking for every avenue to uh, make this program happen. 
and we'll keep you posted um, if there are any changes. But we're on track to proceed and we'll let the committee know of any update on that program. Uh, the power transit vehicles, and thank you all for uh, your attendance. Um, when we rolled them out, it was, was a very um, um, good media present. Um, what I said earlier on during that uh, press conference that they will be rolling out um, June 16th and we're still um, on course for that. They are all registered today. We have the plate, that we have the tax and uh, radios are all installed. Everything is on board and we're gonna be rolling them out June 16th. So the public will see our new electric vehicles um, as promised. On the safety side, like I said, that uh, we, we're trying, we have candidates and we're still in the process of hiring our own in-house staff um, as we ended our contract with Sun State. And uh, so there's, there's a plan to secure both facilities, that is Car Central and ITC. Currently we have our supervisors helping out to make sure that both the ITC and um, Car Central uh, are secured. Mr. you wanna add something? Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Faye. Um, back to recruitment. Um, as you all are aware that we have every Friday uh, walk-in recruitment uh, fair, job fair. So far, I can report to the committee that that is going good. Um, I would say about 89% of folks that came in on our recruitment since I've been here uh, all uh, walked through uh, Friday job fair. So uh, we're still short about 40 drivers for the fixed route site. And I'm hoping that the CDA training campaign will um, help us out to get more people trained and um, get, get our, our um, service back on track and bring all service that were suspended is all tied down to manpower. So we're working on that. And um, 
we still continue doing the weekly job fair, and that's not only for fixed route or paratransit, but all our positions. We also have, uh, me and Ms. Kata met um, last week, and yesterday we have um, um, three codes for vendors that want to promote our service by airing out on radios, TV, um, and every digital campaign um, to let people know that we still have opening positions to fill and how good card is to join us. So all those are in place and hopefully uh, a month or two, we should get close to the numbers that we wanna get to. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you again, Ms. Faye. And my last, my last item on, on the update is the assessment selection. So um, as you can see by our CBA, which is the contract that we have with the ATU, the union, um, the fixed route was supposed to be um, July 3rd. We have an agreement with the union uh, to push that back to July 17th, and they all agreed to that. On the paratransit side, we just had a bid June 9th, and that went very well. And um, we might have um, upcoming bid as per the CBA. So that is all the update I have. Let's miss Faye, want to add something?
there was a question about whether the COATP um, is a requirement. It is not, nor is the master transit plan. FPA does require us to have a five-year capital operating plan to guide investment, and we can choose to fulfill that in a couple of different ways. The COATP is one way, the master transit plan can be another. And then, of course, our inclusion in the uh, work that we do with the MPO and the Transportation Improvement Program is a requirement for federal funding. Um, we appreciate the diligence and care that you give to all of these important matters. And July and, and June and July is going to be a really important month for CAD as the, the annual budget, including our capital improvement program, the master transit plan, and the COATP, all are going to be absolutely critical tools for guiding our investments. Um, and for being showing that business readiness to be able to continue to attract uh, funding opportunities um, that have really we've been so successful with this past year. So we're excited to continue that conversation. Um, then in executive governance, uh, we will consider the issuance of an RFP for federal and state local legislative services. Again, this will be part of the contract administration review that we've reported to you in earlier board meetings on and we'll be separating those out into two RFPs. And then the property and casualty insurance proposed renewal, it is still pending additional information from our broker. As we mentioned earlier in this meeting, um, in particular on Lumpkins Comp, we saw an increase that was um, significant. Um, we saw some increases in some of our other property and casualty insurance, but about what we were expecting. Um, but on Lumpkins Comp, a little higher. And so our insurance carrier, just as they did last month for the health insurance, has continued to do their due diligence to bring those costs down as much as possible so that the final um, that matter that we bring before you for consideration will be the best possible um, deal for that most cost effective. So with that, I think we've covered all the items on the agenda. I'll turn it back over to you, um, Director Levy. Thank you, Madam CEO. Uh, before we adjourn, do we have anything from the members, uh, Director Odell? Director Lockett, do you have any, any comment? Director Odell, can you hear? Can you hear the room? Yes, it's just not always clear. Okay. Committee Chair Leggett was asking if you had any additional questions. No, I just, um, I want to get a hard copy as well as an electric copy. Okay. Of, of the agenda packet or the plan? Of both. Yeah, which item are you referring to, ma'am? The, ag the agenda packet? Of both. Okay. All okay. right. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Director Lockett, do you have any, any additional uh, comments? Does he have anything, Beverly? Yes, sir. We're turning the mics on right now. Thank you. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. I want to say this, make a comment. I was rode over on the um, ferry uh, last week to uh, an affair over there, and it was very impressive. The personnel who worked on the ferry, they were very courteous, and I really, really uh, felt real good about it. I thought that needs to be known that they were very courteous on this. It was just natural. It wasn't. They, it wasn't a put on because we were there. They were just acting natural, but they did a very good job, and they need to be complimented on it. And that's it. And I, I also uh, I share the same uh, sentiment, uh, Director. 
we we both were on the same trolley. It was very professional. They were very courteous to not only to ourselves. They didn't know who we were, but they they were very courteous. They were very courteous to the visitors that were there. And there were so many people uh, using the the ferry system that it was it, it made us feel good as board members to see people excited. Uh, the the ferry itself was clean. Uh, around the ferry was clean and it was safe. So uh, kudos to staff and especially those uh, members who were uh, working on the ferry on that day. So um, with all that being said, uh, I, the next board meeting uh, will be 6-27-2023. And if, it's, if it isn't anything else from, uh, from the body, I adjourn this meeting. Thank you, sir. Thank you.